हरि ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देव सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा श्री गुरुभ्यो नम नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स Welcome to session 149 of Bhagavad Gita verse by verse. This will be the last session of this verse by verse series. We are going to wind up this series with a recap of Mundak Upanishad. We have studied at the end of each chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Sri Amar Madhusudan is going to chant Daridya Dahana Shiva Stotra composed by Sage Vasista later at the end of class. Now, I request our Pahit Desar to give an introduction to the day's class before we begin the recap. Over to you, sir. सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा लुकिंग बैक ओवर द लास्ट टू इयर्स वॉट अ वंडरफुल जर्नी इट हेज बीन फॉर ईच ऑफ अस फ्रॉम परम वेदांत टू अपलोड अबाउट फोर हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव वीडियोज on various topics particularly about the bhagavad gita viveka chudamani tatva bodha om bhaja govindam manisha panchakam upadesha sara and so on and i'm very confident that we have been able to put a quality work on all these topics and this has been possible because of god's grace and to our two acharyas tatpadam darshitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha who has blessed us with this about understanding to be able to share those very sacred teachings we now come to the end of a one particular series and i would request all of you to <clears throat> be in touch with us on this email it is paramvedanta aop association of persons at gmail.com to have your feedback a sense of what you have been able to get and uh, how we can proceed further uh, this will be around guru purnima time when we will start a new series and having studied the bhagavad gita in so many ways now let us look at the source book of the bhagavad gita that is the katha upanishad from now on after the gita and after the uh, disha classes are over we will have only one class per week the second class will be an online class available to all those who are interested online on zoom uh, a form of a satsang where we will study uh, tripti deepa prakaranam this is a nice opportunity for us to discuss the intricate aspects of vedanta but the primary aim is why are we studying vedanta can we attain to tripti can we attain to purnatva if i am by myself and there is nothing around am i am i able to feel that sense of completion without any object without any person without any ideal situations and this is what vedanta will help us to understand it is so appropriate that in today's class we are concluding the most wonderful fundamental upanishad the mundaka upanishad and six of us will be able to summarize each section there are six sections and in 5 minutes each we will give you a glimpse of what we have understood in the mundaka upanishad our opening speaker will be ullas ullas please hari om sir shri guru bhyo namaha as sir said there are six sections in mundaka upanishad we are covering the first mundaka first kand and just to give you a little bit of an introduction in the mundaka upanishad as any other text what is important thing that is being highlighted here is that a guru shishya relationship is very important for our learning if we just ourselves go ahead and look at some of the interpretations or explanations then we may go astray so in every upanishad there is or in any text that we see there is always a guru and there is always a student and there is a teaching going on in a question answer manner so we should also follow that path only and then they are also talking about what is the qualification of the of a student qualification of a guru also not just of the student but also of the guru and then they also talk about what is the glory of this teaching because unless we value something's value then we will not uh, value the learning itself so that all thing is being talked about 
words. In the first verse itself, it says, Brahma Devanam Prathama Sambhavu hai. That this whole knowledge was first given by Vishwasya Karta Bhuvanasya Gopta. Vishwasya Karta means the Lord himself who is the creator of the world, Bhuvanasya Gopta, who is knower of all the, all the Lokas, Narayana himself. Sa Brahma Vidyam Sarva Vidya Pratishtham Atharvaya. He gave this knowledge first to Brahmaji and Brahmaji then gave this knowledge to uh, Atharva, his eldest uh, Jeshta Putraya Praha, who was his eldest son. So here it, the, the context is being set. In the next slide, we see now who is Atharva giving this to? Then he is giving to another Rishi called Angira. Then Angira gives, gives it to Bharadwaj, who is also Satyavaha. And then he ultimately gives it to Angiras. And so Angira is different and Angiras is different. And here the glory of the teaching is mentioned that it is a Brahma Vidya. It is not only taught by Brahmaji, but it is the teaching about the Brahman itself. So that's why it's called Brahma Vidya. And the glory again is Pura Uvacha. It's not a very uh, recent learning. Pura means very ancient from the beginning, like beginningless in fact. And Paravaram means it has come down from the Parampara. It says Puro Vacha Angire Brahma Vidyam and at the end Bharat Vajo Angire Se Paravaram. So it is such a great teaching that it has flown from top to bottom from the main teacher till now. In the next slide, here now the uh, actual Upanishad kind of starts where it says that Shonaka, who is the actual uh, uh, student and Angiras is the teacher of this uh, whole Upanishad, he is asking the question. And, he's, and how you have to ask the question is also very important. First of all, in all our teachings, they say, unless you ask, you will not be told. It is not a teaching that you, you just freely deliver. It is only for the people who are actually curious about it. It is given to them. And they also have to approach the teacher in a very, very proper manner with all the humility, with all that curiosity and with Shraddha. Shraddha does not mean that we just have to follow whatever the teacher is saying, but we have to have that faith that, okay, I have to understand what they're saying. If I don't understand, I have to again ask and again meditate upon it. And so very important. This is the most important, like one of the most important questions he, the uh, student asks. And student is also no ordinary student. Huh? By the way, he's, he's a Mahashala. He's a Grihastha, but he's very, 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 uh, you know, very well off. So there is a great news for us also that this whole teaching is, is very much relevant for us also. And what he asks is that knowing something, you please tell me what is that knowing which? I will get to know about everything. Now, if you think in, in our usual terms, there is not like one thing in the in the transactional world. Like if I learn physics, then I will know chemistry also. Or if I know something in chemistry, then I will know statistics also. That is not the case. But here, what is actually being asked is like, what is the cause of everything? Because once you know the cause of something, then you know about the whole thing about all the effects of that. In the next slide, we see what is the relationship between cause and effect is that, for example, there is gold and ornaments. You don't need to know about every ornament because all ornaments are what nothing different than the gold, only Nama Rupa is different, only shapes and forms are different. So cause is one. So if you understand one cause then you understand all the effects. Cause is the real thing. The substance actually is the gold. There is nothing called... Uh, 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 a weight of a bangle. The weight is only of the gold. So the substance is only the cause. So if you know the substance, then you know everything, which is the effects. And cause is the one which is eternal. This is most important because ornaments tomorrow might vanish, but gold is always going to be there. So cause is the eternal thing. So if you understand that, then you understand many things, almost all things. Cause has independent existence. It can exist by itself. Like clay can exist by itself, but not the pot. In the next slide, in the next mantra, he says, uh, and first of all, here, what is the benefit of knowing all this knowledge? Is that at intellectual level, we once we have achieved most of the things in our lives, we would say, okay, what is the purpose of this life? What are we doing here? So at the Maslow's hierarchy, the highest thing is self-actualization. So you get to answer that. And at the emotional level also, now I have get an anchor for something which is very stable, which is very nityam. So I never have to worry. And so actually this question is something which is a moksha seeking question. So this is a very, very important question. In the next slide, we see that now the guru has actually accepted the student and he starts the teaching. And what he says that, okay, if you want to really know that, then there are two types of knowledges, which are paravidya and aparavidya. Paravidya is the vidya, which talks about the knowledge of the cause. And that is the one which is the liberating knowledge. And everything else in the world that you see, it's the knowledge of all the eff effects like karma yoga and upasana yoga. You get all that, and but it gives you very many material benefits. So these are the two type of knowledges that there are. And again, this is all yet Brahma Vido Vadanti. He is saying that again, this Upanishad is not something which is the starting point of knowledge. Here also, nobody is claiming that I made this. That's why we call it a Porsche. No person is claiming the glory of creating this knowledge. Here also is saying that somebody else told this. 
So everybody is saying that it is coming from Parampara directly from God Narayana himself. In the next line, he says, uh, Tat para Vrigvedo. In all the all the open all the Vedas, there is first Aparavidya is mentioned and then Paravidya is mentioned. And then for Aparavidya also, there is like many kind of Veda Angas are there, which one can study to get more knowledge. But the most important thing is about the Paravidya. In the next slide, we see that there are different attributes or not really attributes, but how do you define God? Because he's actually an attribute less. So there are different things, Adrishyam, you cannot see him, you cannot grasp him, or uh, there is no origin for him, Agrahiyam, Agrotram, Avarnam, there are no attributes, Achakshushotram. It is not available for our eyes and ears. He also does not have any eyes or ears. I'm just using he because I have to say something. And then Apani Padam, there is no karmi, uh, uh, karmi Indriyas also, no hands, no legs. He's always there, Nityam, Sarvagatam, all pervading and different attributes are mentioned. The next slide, the very important thing which is mentioned is Yad Bhuta Yonim Paripashyanti Dhira. How these uh, intelligent people view him as the cause of everything. This is very important. Jagat Karanam Ishwara. He's both intelligent and material cause. And because of that, he's Vibhum also because one cause is available in everything. In the next slide, he is, how is Bhagwan Jagat Karanam? There are a few examples are giving. Just like a spider is the cause of spider web. Just like earth is the cause of all the, all the planets. They are only coming out of that. Just like body is the cause of hair growth. Why these three examples are giving in the next slide we see? Because, for example, spider is both the intelligent as well as the material cause. So to just show that, like God is also like that. From how one would say, like, how can one cause create so many effects? So example of earth and plants is given. And then one would say that how Chetan and Achetan, both things are coming. So, but from body, apart from all the living things, there is like hair and uh, nails are also coming. So that example shows that uh, that's how God also manifests itself. In the next slide, we see what are the stages of the creation. Tapasa Chiyate Brahma. Brahma first just thinks about it. And then Tato Annam Ibijayate. Then he gets that vision that, okay, this is the world I need to create. And from that vision itself, Annat Prano Manaha, then what gets created is the total mind. And from the total mind gets created Mana. And then Satyam are all the uh, uh, Panchabhuta, gross and subtle Panchabhutas get created. Out of that, all the Lokas are created. And then ultimately, the action gets created because of the desire and all. And in the last verse, in the next slide, we see that... Uh, what again a few of the other attributes are like he becomes sarvagnya because he is the very cause once you know the cause you know all the effects he is sarvavid he knows about all the effects also tapaha his visualization of the kriya through maya shakti he says jnana mayam tapa using the maya shakti he creates everything and then ultimately actually nothing gets created it's only the nama rupa that are given uh, but there is no real creation and then finally food is also created so that's the summary of the first mundaka first kanda thank you sir Hariyan. Thank you very much, Ullas. Uh, if you go through this, you will see there is so much. And Ullas has done his very best to be able to present the entire first section of the first Mundaka in a way that you will be able to understand, giving the context. What is the question which should be in the background for the entire Upanishad, which is the answer to this question? What is that knowing which everything becomes known? I will stop my appreciation of each speaker because I know you have done so much work to make, be able to make this fluent presentation. In future, I will not come in between each speaker so that each of you will get a little more time to be able to express your understanding in a more relaxed manner. Dr. Devakar, please. Thank you, sir. Om Shri Guru Namaha. Dvitiya Kanda of Pratama Mundaka has 13 mantras. We know that Vedas are broadly classified into Veda Purva, which is also called as Karma Kanda or Aparavidya, and Vedanta, which is the Gnana Kanda or Paravidya. Veda Purva deals with the preparatory sadhanas such as Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga, whereas Vedanta deals with the Atma Gnana Yoga. It is necessary to reiterate that without the preparatory sadhanas, Gnana Yoga will not lead to emotional strength. On the other hand, just getting stuck at the sadhanas alone without progressing to Gnana Yoga, also will not lead to lasting peace, security and happiness. The next slide we see. These 13 mantras deals mainly with the Karma Kanda, their practice and benefits till the six, first six mantras, their limitations, limitations of karmas from the mantras 7, seven till 11. And the last two mantras are the transition mantras where the Karma Yogi enters into Gnana Yoga. In the first six mantras, Upanishad deals with the various forms of homas or fire rituals 
and says that if one sincerely practices the karmas as prescribed by the Vedas, then the sadhaka will surely get the desired benefits, be it materialistic, heavenly or spiritual. Here, various oblations ritual and the rituals are mentioned and these are representatives of the Pancha Mahayagna, particularly Deva Yagna. Pancha Mahayagna has to be compulsorily practiced by everyone according to their abilities and resources. This karma has to be Nishkama karma, meaning there should not be any selfish material desires or motives while performing Pancha Mahayagna. In the next slide, we see the Mantra 7, which talks about the limitations of the karmas when done only for the material benefits. We know that all material pleasures have intrinsic three defects, which is Dukkha Mishritatvam, Atrupti Karatvam and Bandhakatvam. Leaning on worldly pleasures for the lasting peace, security and happiness, or in other words, doing work after the work, all life searching for the eternal bliss, is like trying to sail and stay afloat using a broken boat. The term Adruda Plava is used in this mantra. This Adruda Plava we are using in the rough ocean of samsara. This mantra says those who get stuck at only material karmas are deluded as they will drown in the ocean of the samsara because they are using the broken boat. In the next mantra we see, next slide, which is mantra 8. Avidyaya mantare vartamanaha swayam dhiraha. Panditam manyamanaha, janghanyamanaha, pariyamti muda, andhe naiva niyamana yathandaha. Doing karmas for mind purity is the purpose of the religious lifestyle. Religious lifestyle is the stepping stone for the spiritual lifestyle. Religious lifestyle can diagnose the problem of samsara and help in lessening the suffering, like the first aid treatment. But it is the spiritual lifestyle which gives the cure the disease of the samsara. Upanishad strongly criticizes those people who do not diagnose the problem of samsara properly and therefore they falsely believe that karma alone or just the religious rituals alone is the cure for the samsara. These are the people who knows, who knows not but thinks they know. They call themselves as panditaha and are steeped in ahankara. Steeped in the spiritual ignorance, they proclaim that they know everything. Avidyaya mantare vartamanaha swayam diraha pandita manyamanaha. And they run around seeking the money and sense pleasures. Janganyamanaha pariyanti modaha. Not just that, they also influence others to follow their path. This is like blind people are guided by the blind. Such blind people drown in the whirlpool of samsara. In the next slide we see. Then what happens about those who have spiritual knowledge, those who have the realization that the religious life is indeed just a stepping stone to enter into Jnana Yoga? This is explained in the Mantra 12, which is a popular and a frequently quoted mantra. This is a transition mantra from the Jnana Yogyata to, Jna, to Jnanam. Pariksha Lokan Karma Chitan Brahmano Nirveda Maya Nastya Kratakratena Tad Vignartam Sa Guru Meva Bigachet Samit Panhi Shrotri Yabrahmanishtam. A mere karmi will not seek jnanam, but a karma yogi who also is a upasana yogi will be in a transition stage and therefore will seek jnanam. Such a yogi who has uh, the prerequisite qualifications is called as Brahmana in this mantra. It is necessary to reiterate that Brahmana is Guna Brahmana one with higher sattvic guna and he is not karma brahmana or jati brahmana. This guna brahmana learns valid lessons through his experiences that material pursuits such as artha, kama and dharma doesn't give lasting peace, security and happiness. Parikshalokan brahmana. This yogi after examining the world, nirvedam ayat, develops dispassion towards the sense objects and the pleasures. He develops vairagyam towards dharmartha kama. This dispassion is born out of the understanding that the entire creation is the collective karmapala only. And this karmapalas have inherent defects of atrupti karatvam, dukkha mishritatvam and bandhakatvam. And after realizing that there is nothing uh, which is without the defects, this in this perceivable creation, he goes on searching for the eternal source for the eternal bliss and happiness. 
he turns to Vedanta, seeking the defectless source for the eternal happiness, and which is nothing but Brahman. In the next, next slide, we see Tad Vignartam. In order to know this Brahman or Atma, Sa Guru Meva He seeks teachings from a qualified Guru who acts like a mirror using Shastra Pramana. Samit, samit Pani. He approaches the Guru with a Samit, meaning a twig, used as an offering for the Homa. The deeper meaning is he approaches the Guru with an attitude of Shraddha by offering the ego to get burned in the fire of knowledge. This shows the qualities of an ideal Vedantic student, uh, the one who is a Karmanu Pasana Yogi and approaches the Guru with Bhakti and Shraddha with a non-critical mind. Then the quality of the ideal Guru is Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam. Brahmanishta is the one who is not only who not only knows the Brahmagnanam, but is always anchored in, this, in that knowledge. He is the Sthita Pragna. And Shrotriyam means that Guru who has the best teaching and communication skills on Atma Gnanam. We are lucky that we have such a Guru in the Swami Paramartha Nanda. And the Guru teaches Tatatva Masi, which is nothing but the Jiva Atma Paramatma Aikya Vichara. So Dvitiya Khanda Pratama Mundaka ends with the spiritually hungry Shishya approaching a qualified Guru. A wonderful dialogue on Atma Gnanam follows in the subsequent sections. Hari Om sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Devakar. <clears throat> We go to the next section, and in this section, we get the real answer to the question that Shaunaka asked. What is that, O Bhagavan, knowing which everything becomes known? The first of these two sections deals with creation as Sat Brahman or existence. I see the whole world around me. It is existent. Now, in Vedanta, one of the most difficult to understand to see Brahman as that which is responsible for everything that is existent. Easy way to understand is how the Bhagavad Gita talks the whole world as none other than Bhagavan, Vishwa, Rupa, Ishwara. So for many of us, it will be easier to understand this chapter as Vishwa, Rupa, Ishwara, uh, Ishwara, where the although I see the world as Bhagavan, the world is of a lower order of reality. It is really Bhagavan who is giving existence to the world and therefore, I need to see Brahma Satyam in the background of my mind, in the cave of my heart. And the world that I see is like a dreamy world, Jagan Mithya. Let us see how this chapter goes on. There are many mantras which culminate in the 10th and the most important mantra, perhaps in the entire Upanishad, which answers this question. The first mantra talks about from the creator to the creation, an example of a huge conflagration from which sparks arise. So everything that is created like is like the spark and the creator is like a huge conflagration. Tadetat satyam yatha sudipta pavaka vispulingaha. Vispulingaha are these tiny sparks that come from sudipta. So akshara vivida bhava prajayante. From that imperishable Brahman, everything is born and it goes back to it. Yata subdid sudipta pavakad. Pavakad means a bonfire. Sudipta, huge. Vispulingaha sahasra. Thousands of tiny sparks rise. All of them are prabhavante sarupa. All of them have ushnatvam and prakashatvam. All of them have heat and light, very similar to the nature of the creator. That means, when you say, I am, all of us confidently say, I am. What does I mean? I am conscious. Only I, only a conscious person can say I. This table cannot say I. So, am means I am existent. So, this verse introduces to that fact of what is this I am or what is that which is existent. Now, we have spoken about the material world. The next world talks, next world talks about uh, conscious beings, divyaha, that means Brahman. Remember, Ulla spoke about the six words, yadat, dresham, agrahim. This is very similar to that, which talks about the first mantra, the conflagration mantra was called tatastha lakshana, indirect definition of Brahman. This is swarupa lakshana, the real definition. How is Brahman? Brahman. The reality is in the form of 
divyaha, if self illumined, it does not need anything else to illumine itself. He, for emphasis, amurtaha, it is formless, purushaha, it is all pervading. It is bahya antara, it is both in and outside. Ajaha, it is unborn, that means it has been there from the very beginning and it will always be till the very end. Aprana amanaha, that means it does not have gross body, it does not have subtle body. Subraha, that means it is very pure. He aksharat parat paraha. That means it is the highest. There cannot be anything higher than this. This is what is called the swarupa lakshana of what we are looking for. Shaunaka was asked, what is that knowing which? So the teacher gives the definition of that. Now we come to the this mantra. I will suggest to all sincere students, let us just memorize this mantra. For me personally, it is my everyday prayer. Pariksha, I'm sorry, Purusha, Purusha Evedam Vishwam, Karma Tapa Brahma Paramrutam, Yetad Yo Veda Nihitam Guhaya, So Avidya Tirantin Vikiratihi Somya. This is the mantra to remember. What does this mantra say? What, this is called the Tat Paryam. This is the main message of the Srishti Prakarana of this particular section, what we should know. Brahman alone appears as the world. We have to train ourselves, just like in the Bhagavad Gita 11th chapter, we trained ourselves to see everything that I see and experience is none other than Sri Krishna himself. Now we change the word to say everything that I see is none other than Brahman itself. As in the Chandokya Upanishad, Sarvam Kaluvidam Brahma, everything is Brahman itself. So, uh, how does the mantra go? Purusha Evedam Vishwam. The entire world that I see is none other than Purusha himself. Purusha himself means Brahman, the infinite itself has become the world. My world is different from your world because each of our world is dependent upon our past karma, our past tapaha. That means our past karma and our past upasana gives us a different shade to the same world. This is what is called Jiva Shrishti compared to Ishwara Shrishti. My world is slightly different. Purusha Evedam, Purusha himself has become this world, but this world is a product of my past karma and tapaha. Now, how should I know this world? So, my whole perspective now is this world is not just a world, but it is Isha Vasyam Idam Sarva. I should be able to say everything is none other than Brahman. This is the essence of this mantra. And therefore, everything I see now develops a kind of a reverence. In whatever I see, Prati Bodha Viditam, I see Brahman himself. Now, where do I recognize this fact? that this world is none other than Purusha. I need to recognize this in the cave of my heart. What is there in the cave of my heart? In the cave of my heart, I identify my real self or as consciousness. When I see this cave, in the cave of my heart is residing Brahman. If Brahman is everywhere, he should be in me also. He should be that force which allows me to speak. That speaker in me, is there in the cave of my heart. It is there everywhere also. And once I recognize him or that Brahman or the real me as I am, something wonderful happens. The knot in my heart is broken. The knot in my heart is avidya kama karma. Avidya means I do not know I am that. I do not know I am Brahman. When I do not know what I am, I am, then I have karma. For karma, I have to do karma. Karma creates punar jama, janma, and this cycle goes on and on. Yo veda nihitam gohaya so avidya grantim vikirati. This whole cycle is broken. The moment I understand, I am. The moment I understand, I am that. And I see the whole world is none other than an extension of me. And the world is none other than me. This is what is called a Sutra Bhuta. And in the next section, you will be able to see a greater elaboration of how the consciousness in me is the existence outside. And that will be explained to us by Dr. Anupama. Dr. Anupama, please. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. 
second mundaka, second khanda, a summary. In this section, we see a description of our journey from the triangular to the binary format. Whatever be our situation at birth, privileged or underprivileged, we are born with an abundance of ignorance, avidya, both para and apara. Yet a human birth, manushatvam, is indeed a privilege if we have a desire for self-knowledge, mumukshatvam, under the guidance of a guru, maha purusha samshrayaha. This pursuit of knowledge results in the destruction of the not, meaning our entanglement in ignorance, avidya grantim vikirati. The wise Shaunaka asked his guru Angiras, what is that by knowing which everything is known? The guru Angiras said, idam vishvam karma tapaha purusha eva, etad yo veda parama, param, paramrutam brahma, Nihitam Guhayam Saha Vikirati Avidya Grantim Iha Saumya. Dr. Hegde has just explained this verse for us. As Agnanis, we look around only to perceive three seemingly distinct entities. One, ourselves, the Jivatma, loaded with Ahankara Mamakara, the universe, Jagat, for transactions, and Ishvara, our savior in moments of crisis. This is the triangular format. Yet, this is contrary to what we have just heard. Idam vishvam karma tapaha purusha eva. This means there is nothing other than Brahman. So, how do we exit this triangular format? We should first know who am I? What is Jivatma? Mantra 7 says, Yaha sarvagnya sarvavid yasya eva mahima bhuvihi Divye Brahma Purihi Eva Esha Vyomani Atma Parishtita Pratishtita, meaning you are the omniscient Atma, the glory of the universe is yours, and you are installed in the heart, which is the effulgent city of Brahman. Mantras 1 and 2 say, Avi Sannihitam Guhacharam Yad Archimat, you are the self effulgent indweller of the heart. So, where is this Atma? Where am I located? Sannihitam Guhacharam, Vyomani Divye Brahmapure, Hridayam Sannidhaya Pratishtita. Atma is recognizable in the refined mind of a jnani, and this mind is located in the heart. Located means not physically, but recognizable. Upalabhyate. Mantra 8 says, Tat Vijnane na Paripashyanti Diraha. Ananda Rupam Amritam Yet Vibhati. Through Shastra Vichara, the prepared mind becomes aware of the Atma Tattvam in him as the immortal Ananda Rupam. Now, what is the relationship between the Atma, the mind, and the heart? Ara Eva Ratanabho Samhata Yatra Nadiaha. Ara means the spokes, the, the spokes of a chariot wheel, which are compared to the the nadis, which are the blood vessels, lymphatics, etc., in our body. And Ratanabhi is the hub of the wheel compared to the heart. And the movement of the spokes of the wheel is compared to the flow of thoughts in the mind. And the absolutely motionless center of the hub is compared to the witness consciousness that illumines all our thoughts, the Atma, the Sakshi Chaitanyam. This mantra says, Focus on this Sakshi Chaitanyam alone and not the moving thoughts, the Anatma. Yesmin cha loka cha lokinaha nihitaha tad etad aksharam brahma bhavati, meaning the entire assemblage of our body mind complex, this jiva, is dependent on this Sakshi Chaitanyam alone. This means Brahma Satyam. So, what is the relationship between this jivatma and Paramatma? Mantra one says, Avihi sanitam guhacharam nama mahat padam atra etat samarpitam. Mantra seven says, Divye brahma purihi esha vyoman atma pratishtita. Mantra ten, Hiranmaye pare koshe tad virajam brahma upalabhyate. And mantra eleven, Natatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam. 
नेमा विद्युतो पाती बट तम एव भांतम अनुभाति सर्वम वॉट इज दिस मीन जीवात्मा इज परमात्मा फाइनली वॉट इज जगत द यूनिवर्स मंत्रा फाइव सेज यस्मिन ध्यो पृथ्वी च अंतरिक्षम ओतम मनहा सा प्राणे ही च सर्वै तम एवं एकम जानता आत्मानम अन्य वाचो विमुच्छता amrutasya esha setu this means there is only one atma only one chaitanyam which is the adhisthanam of both the macro the samashti and the micro the vyashti prapancha this universe is comparable to a cloth and brahman to the thread when there is no thread where is the cloth this means jagat is mithya so now we are left with just jivatma and paramatma Upanishad says, Jeevo Brahma Eva Na Paraha. We have to abolish this notional distance between Jeevatma and Paramatma. How? By Omkara Vichara. Pranavo Dhanuhu Sharohi Atma. The bow is compared to Omkara and arrow to Jeevatma. Target being Brahman. Sharavat Tanmayo Bhave. Jeevatma has to merge with Paramatma. This is Jeevatma. Jeevatma Paramatma Aikyam. What is the result? The result is the realization that there is nothing other than Brahma. Mantra 12 says, Brahma eva idam amritam purasthat, Brahma paschat, Brahma eva idam vishwam idam varishtam. This is precisely where we started. Idam vishwam karma tapaha purusha eva. So what is the benefit of this knowledge? Tamaha parasthat Paraya vaha swasti astu. The guru assures the student auspiciousness on reaching the shore of knowledge beyond ignorance. Esha amritasya setu bhavati. This is the means to immortality. How is this so? Vidyate hridaya granti. Chidyate sarva samshaya. Kriyante cha asya karmani. Yasmin drishte paravare. Meaning, when Jeevatma is known as Paramatma, the not the avidya of the heart is broken all doubts are dispelled and all karmas perish this is our destination the binary format thank you thank you dr anupama as we are good on time i thought i will say a few words after you have spoken In this particular section the teacher goes into a form of an ecstasy where each verse each mantra is so refined so profound and thanks to our teachers we have some understanding which dr anupama has so nicely interwoven to give this essential message that purusha eva idam vishwam karma tapa brahma paramrutam this whole world is none other than bhagwan and that you have to recognize in the core of your heart and once you are able to recognize the celebration of this mantra is vidyate hridaya granti chiddante sarva samshaya when the ground when the not in the heart is broken and all your doubts go and tasmin drishte paravare that is the vision of a person of understanding so this is another mantra that we have to study and remember vidyate hridaya granti but this becomes meaningful only when we study all these mantras and finally when we do this mantra na tatra suryo bhati remember tvameva bandham it is because of my consciousness i am able to illumine the lord to whom i am doing this arati what a declaration and that is this beautiful climax now we have a trying to consolidate this understanding and this will be explained to us by dr komal dr komal please om shri gurubhyo namaha mundaka upanishad we have reached the climax as dr anupama just uh, explained and uh, higde sir uh, elaborated on this is the climax where we reach a kind of celebration and an ecstasy of the glory of knowledge now we are entering the trithiya mundaka prathama kanda this prathama kanda has 10 verses some of the very important and popular verses are seen in this section so particularly the tale of two birds jiva and ishvara if you see many of the books 
uh, which gives commentary on Munda Kupanishad as this is taken from commentary by Swami Chinmayananda. The front cover generally represents these two birds. So in sort of it represents Munda Kupanishad, the core, uh, the allegory which is repeatedly often quoted is about the two birds, Jiva and Ishvara. So we'll see that uh, verse further. So I will summarize these 10 verses according to what Swami Paramarthanandaji has explained us. He says the whole of these 10 verses, as well as in the second uh, khanda, Pratama khanda as well as Dvitiya khanda, concentrates on four aspects. It's about Atma Swarupam, what is my real nature? Second is Atma Swarupa Jnanam, the knowledge of my real nature. Third, Atma Swarupa Jnana Phalam, what is the benefit of this knowledge? And then Atma Swarupa Jnana Sadhanani, what is the commitment, how to reach there? So knowledge, benefit, commitment, KBC, Kaun Banega Jnani, so it's, not, it's like that. So this Atma Swarupam and this how you reach there, the knowledge and benefit is explained in these verses. What is my real nature? I am Eka, Sara, Nitya, Satya, Adishtanam, Brahma. We have reached there. Brahma, Satya, Jagan, Mitya, Jeevo, Brahma, even Aparaha. We saw that. And here, who am I? What is my real nature? I am the Karana Brahma, the Advaita Brahma. And world around me is just Nama Rupa. It's not wrong to be associated and to be in this world. Taking Nama Rupa is not a sin. It's okay. But occasionally, as often as possible, we need to get into the green room as these children are doing, where you come out of this Vesham, be yourself and introspect. That is the time of Nididhyasana, where you will contemplate on your real self, enjoy and revel in that knowledge, true ananda. Okay, that is the knowledge. It should be like in the tips of your fingers. It's like once we know the real nature, once you know, know my real nature, that knowledge is not something to be kept in your bank locker. It should be like an app in your phone, like WhatsApp. You can consider a God app, God's app, or to say it's your own app, which you remember those times when you just the times which you take off from your mundane work and get into WhatsApp and get so engrossed in some group discussions what is happening. Similarly, Nididhyasana is that where you hook, where you get hooked on to this your own app, where you get into this green room of your life, which is separate and which you can just go at the click of a button whenever you want. And that is the Nididhyasana. That's the new real benefit real usefulness of that knowledge, the knowledge of my real nature. And what is the benefit of this knowledge? Is pure celebration, ecstasy. Where celebration? Is it only inward? Is it only the nididhyasana and the enjoyment when you know that knowledge? No, it's not only that. It's also the enjoyment in your day-to-day -day worldly affairs where the jnani will know that he is just in this Namarupa world, that it's, he is just in that Vesham, but still he revels and understands and uses his knowledge of Jnana that he is, uh, that Brahma Satya Jagan Mityam, and still revels and enjoys in that Krida. The enjoyment outside is explained in fourth verse as Atma Krida. And Atma Rati is the internal enjoyment, which is uh, during the Nididhyasana time. When you log on to your Nididhyasana mode, where you take off your Nama, Rupa, and Vesha, that's when you enjoy the Atma Rati. That's the internal, pure joy, Ananda, the bliss. So these are the two aspects, the benefit of the knowledge. And we'll come to the Sadhanani, the commitment required, how you reach there in the later verses. Now coming to the impo most important verse in the next slide we see, the first verse, here this popular example of two birds on a tree. Dva suparna sveja 
സകായ സമാനം വൃക്ഷം പരിശാസ്വ ജാത്തെ ടൂ ബേഡ് സിറ്റിംഗ് ഓൺ എ ട്രീ സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ആൾ വെരി സിംബോളിക് ഈച്ച് ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ ക്യാൻ ബി കൺസിഡർഡ് ആസ് ബീങ് മേഡ് അപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഫൈവ് ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് വൺ ഈസ് അവർ ഗ്രോസ് ബോഡി സെറ്റിൽ ബോഡി കോസൽ ബോഡി and the fourth is the reflected consciousness that is the chidabhasa and then the fifth is the one which is illuminating this or other four things which is called paramatma the original consciousness here in this example of two birds on a tree the tree is the gross body and the paramatma is uh, illustrated as one bird which is just sitting and observing and illuminating that's the original consciousness and jivatma is a mixture of three aspects there's the subtle body causal body as well as the reflected consciousness the chidabhasa so now what this jivatma does pippalam swadayate it will be constantly getting interested and getting attracted by the fruits and keeps on eating the fruits of karma papa punya whatever the activities of the world so this is the work of jivatma now this jivatma which consists of this chidabhasa subtle body and causal body has an option because of its free will as a human being to get associated with either the tree the gross body which most of us naturally innately intuitively get attached to and or the other option is to get associated with paramatma the original consciousness so that is the option for us so this is the symbolism of two birds sitting on a tree the birds they are not the constant companions of the tree they are bound to fly out but the tree is something which can be destroyed cut and broken so that's the gross body whereas the jivatma has the option of getting associated with the gross body or with the paramatma so that's the symbolism of uh, this uh, tale of two birds in second verse it's mentioned about vriksha nimagna the, again the previous slide vriksha nimagna means the how intently this uh, the bird the jivatma is getting deluded in the worldly affairs it's not seeing anywhere else it's just concentrating on the tree and its fruits so that's so that's nimagna is that word deeply attached submerged immersed in the worldly affairs so this is uh, explained in verse number 2 and then once he starts understanding and getting attached with the paramatma the original consciousness that's when the fourth work comes of atma krida and atma rati that enjoyment of both internal enjoyment as well as the external enjoyment fully knowing the uh, nama rupa that it is jagat is mithya fully knowing that still the gnani will be able to understand and enjoy even the reflected enjoyment okay, that is the next aspect once you hook on to the original consciousness further next in the last verses we see the second important uh, uh, mantra which comes in this kanda that is verse number 6 where we get our national motto which is taken from this verse that is satyam eva jayate namrutam satyena panta vitato devayanaha so here the these verses will be talking about the what are the commitment required what is the how do you reach there the sadhana the sadhana in this uh, part of this upanishad is divided into four aspects one is satya the principle the most important spiritual value to reach to gnana is satyam that is being truthful the second one is tapa that is physical austerity and the third one is brahmacharya that is sexual morals so we have to remember these are supportive values whereas the primary value is the most important vedanta vichara that's the fourth uh, it is mentioned as the fourth that's vedanta vichara which is nothing but shravana manana and nididhyasana that's the principal sadhana but to reach there we need this ancillary contributory sadhanas which are equally important that is uh, in the other way to put that is 
karma yoga and upasana yoga which will take us to the gnana yoga part which is again the vedanta vichara that is shravana manana and nididhyasana swami gives example of the frying pan and the oil which has to be heated to a sufficient temperature to make vada so the vada is like your gnana yoga if your prince ancillary and this contributory uh, values are not up to the mark the oil is not heated up to the mark the outcome of the vada will not be good so unless it is of a certain once you reach that certain level only the outcome of being a uh, becoming a gnani is fruct fructified so that's why the importance of this ancillary contributory values out of which the most important one is satya truth alone trims this is our national motto which is there in every note and every coin of india not falsehood truth means the person who is truthful and not the person who uh, is into falsehood through truth the divine path is spread out by which the sages whose desires have been completely fulfilled reach to where is that supreme treasure of truth that is the gnanam thank you Thank you, Dr. Komal, for giving us uh, the essence of the last part. The final speaker will be Dr. Kiran. Dr. Kiran, please. Hariyo, Namaste. We are now coming to the summary of the last section of the Mundaka. Here, this, since this is a summary, four important topics are covered. One is Atma Swarupa, real nature of I, and what is this knowledge of the real nature? And the sadhanas or discipline required for gaining this and the ultimate benefit or phalam. The sadhanas most highlighted here are commitment and sincerity or vevasatmaka buddhi. That is having spiritual goal as a uh, important aim. That is we aim for moksha shreyas and not prayas. And this is attained not by merely memory uh, or listening or chanting verses, but only by making this spiritual life as our goal and leading it. The four disciplines highlighted are internal strength or spiritual strength. Second, prioritization of spiritual life as goal. We travel in train and in between we get down to eat food. And just because idli is tasty, we don't forget to get back into the train. Similarly, we enjoy the life around, but Ultimately, we should keep moksha as the aim and scriptural study. And we should also fourth highlighted is sannyasa, that is internal detachment and surrender to the Lord's feet or Guru's feet is important. That is sadhana chachushtaya sampanna. The next topic deals with is mukti. Here in videha mukti, which is highlighted here, out of six components of a gnani, 15 merges with totality and only Nama remains. That is, and his karmas, all the karmas are destroyed. This sthula shariram merges with the samasti sthula shariram or virat ishvara. Similarly, sukshma into hiranyagarbha and karana into antaryami. And ultimately, only the Ram, Nama remains. Lord Shankaracharya lived here about 1500 years ago, but still his nama remains. The four important mantra in this section are in 5, 6 and 9 and Vedanta Vijnana Sunicharta that is one of the verses we chant when sannyasi comes to our house is from this section. And another verse I want to take up that is this verse, important one. Saheva etat paramam brahma ved brahmaiva bhavati Nasya Brahma Itkule Bhavati Tarati Shokam. That is, knower of the Brahman becomes Brahman. This is a Mahavakya. Will the knower of the light becomes light? No. Under only one condition. That is, I am already Paramatma and because of ignorance, I have not known or disowned my real nature. Just like how Karana didn't know he was Kuntiputra and ultimately when that was told to him, by Krishna, he uh, by Kunti, he becomes Kuntiputra. He always was Kuntiputra. He regains that uh, status. 
and such a gnani crosses over the sorrow and regrets and he becomes jivan mukti he takes happiness joy and sadness in a equal stride that doesn't mean he is a zombie just like how krishna enjoys leela with gopikas the gnani will be in fully involved with the life but he knows that this is all leela nani does not know brahman as there is brahman or uh, you know uh, something else like in philosophy he knows brahman as i am iti vedasa brahmaiva bhavati just like i am kiran here and somebody else know you are not kiran you are uh, you know sidramaya or modi or something i will not say i will not accept it i know very well that i am kiran more clearer than this the gnani will know the real nature of me is atma and this is only body mind complex and this gnani becomes so powerful that people around him also gets attracted and changes into brahman just like how the one light can light thousands of lamps he enlightens many and ultimately is free from all knots guha gram granti o vimukti here granti means ignorance and afterwards what does he do he doesn't sit quietly he should dwell on shastras and each time he will get a new insight and lead a healthy life that is pancha mahayagnam or vichar ashrama dharma he belongs and continue to offer prayers to the lord and he, uh, it says that this knowledge should be taught to qualified people etad satyam then offers it ends by offering salutation to the entire guru parampara namaha parama rishi bhyam om iti tat sat namaskar thank you very much dr kiran we'll now listen to madhusudan chanting the daridra dahana shiva stotra guru bhyo namaha vishveshwaraya narakarnavataradaya ಕರ್ಣಾಮೃತಾಯ ಶಶಿಶೇಖರಧಾರಣಾ ಕರ್ಪೂರಕಾಂತಿಧವಲಾಯ ಜಟಾಧರಾಯ ದಾರಿದ್ರ್ಯದುಖದಹನಾಯ ಶಿವಾಯ ಗೌರೀ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಯ ರಜನೀಶಕಲಾಧರಾಯ ಕಾಲಾಂತಕಾಯ ಭುಜಗಾಧಿಪಕಂಕಣಾಯ ಗಂಗಾಧರಾಯ ಗಜರಾಜ ವಿಮರ್ಧನಾಯ ದಾರಿದ್ರ್ಯದುಖದಹನಾಯ ಶಿವಾಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಯ ಭವರೋಗಯಾಯ ಉಗ್ರಾಯ ದುಃಖಸಾಗರತಾರಣಾಯ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಮಯ ಗುಣನಾಮಸ್ಮೃತ್ಯಕಾಯ ದಾರಿದ್ರ್ಯದು ಖದಹನಾಯ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಚರ್ಮಾಂಬರಾಯ ಶವಭಸ್ಮ ವಿಲೇಪನಾಯ ಪಾಲೇಕ್ಷಣಾಯ ಮಣಿಕುಂಡಲ ಮಂಡಿತಾಯ ಮಂಜೀರ ಪಾದಯುಗಳಾಯ ಜಗಾಧರಾಯ ದಾರಿದ್ರ್ಯದುಃಖದಹನಾಯ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಪಂಚಾನಯ ಧಣಿರಾಜ ವಿಭೂಷಣಾಯ ಹೇಮಾಂಶುಕಾಯ ಭುವನತ್ರಯ ಮಂಡಿತಾಯ ಆನಂದ ಭೂಮಿ ವರದಾಯ ತಮೋಮಯ ದಾರಿದ್ರ್ಯದುಃಖದಹನಾಯ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ 
गौरी विलास भवनाय महेश्वराय पंचाननाय चरणागत कल्पकाय शर्वाय सर्वजगताय तस्म दारिद्र्यदुखदहनाय नम शिवाय भानुप्रियाय भवसागरताय का कमलासन पूजिताय नेत्रत्रयाय शुभलक्षण लक्षिताय दारिद्र्यदुखदहनाय नम शिवाय राम प्रियाय रघुनाथ वर प्रदा नाग प्रिजाय नरकाणुवता पुण्यु पुण्य भरीताय सुरक्षिताय दारिद्र्यदुखदहनाय नम शिवाय मुक्तराय फलदाय गणेशराय गीत प्रिजाय वृषभेशर वाहनाय मातंग चर्म वसनाय महेशराय दारिद्र्यदुखदहनाय नम शिवाय वसीन कृत स्त्र शीघ्रम पुत्र पुत्रपोत्रिवर्धनम श्रीवशिष्ठत दारिद्र्यदन स्त्र हरि ओम थैंक यू मधु फॉर डिवाइन चैंटिंग and all the speakers for a profound wonderful class friends this great journey of bhagavad gita which began on 23rd april 23rd april 2021 comes to a close today that is 26th may 2023 149 sessions and 2 years of non stop bhagavad gita is no mean achievement which wouldn't have been possible without the grace of bhagwan shri krishna vyasacharya who composed this and our guru swami paramarthananda whose teaching has been the basis of our classes congratulations to all of you for having completed this journey successfully team parambedanta bow down at the lotus feet of all our gurus for making this possible we are indebted to our kaivartaka dr timma pahegde sir for navigating this travel effortlessly i must be ever grateful to all those volunteers of parambedanta who have strived hard to accomplish this huge task be it providing a platform of zoom Eight hours of dedicated preparation to present the verses, chanting of Gita verses and various compositions, compiling, assimilating, editing, arranging of slides, uploading the videos on YouTube, drafting the text of introduction to each episode on YouTube and notification, comparing of each session, sending notifications to you all from time to time, interaction with you, preparing the daily quiz and so many works without which these sessions. would not have been a reality and a big thanks to you all for being with us encouraging us and supporting us in this mission with the completion of this series we are left with a few more sessions of disha which is going to be premiered both on mondays and fridays henceforth till its completion on monday 29th may 2023 let us log in for a session 61 of disha for the discovery of inner strength and happiness at 6:45 pm in this episode of disha we will continue our study of chapter 14 that brings us to the close of today's session <clears throat> om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate 
Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Thank you.